Networking helps future-proof you because life will happen. And you think your life's going to go like this. Your life is going to actually look like Spaghetti Junction when you arrive at 50 and look, how did I get here? So you cannot predict when life is going to happen. All right, folks, brace yourselves for another insightful episode of the Master Your Business podcast. It's me, Deirdre Martin, your guide on this journey, taking you, our dedicated professional service providers, through the maze and labyrinth of business strategies, growth hacks, and invaluable insights. This show, it's all about equipping you to elevate your game. And today we're honing in on a topic that many might deem essential, but quite a few are apprehensive, reluctant, or nervous about. And hands up, that includes me. And that is networking. So who better to walk us through this than the networking architect herself, the award-winning Jean Evans? For those of you who might not know, Jean's passion for networking didn't just come out of the blue. Her story is rich with experiences that are both challenging and rewarding. From being deeply immersed in the tourism sector to all of a sudden facing redundancy and then starting anew by mastering the art of connecting. She has used platforms like her blog, podcast and social media all of which Jean generously shares her tried and tested tricks of the trade on. And she does this with the sole intention and purpose of trying to transform even the shyest of introverts into confident networkers. A member of numerous esteemed networks, and as at the time of recording this, she is the current chair of the City West B2B in the South Dublin Chamber. And Jean's reputation, let me tell you, it absolutely precedes her. So her mission really is about helping everyone recognize that successful networking, and that is networking done right, can be a game changer for business growth and more importantly, for personal and professional development. Jean today will unwrap her vision of networking from the unique viewpoint of someone who started from scratch post-redundancy and how this transition birthed the idea of her business, Network Me, and her networking group, which is called Ignite. Jean shares and debunks myths. She clarifies confusions. And Jean today will unwrap her vision of networking from the unique viewpoint of someone who started from scratch post-redundancy and how this transitioned into the idea that is now her business, Network Me, and her networking group, Ignite. She's here to debunk myths, clarify confusions, and show us that with the right strategy, the right attitude, and some heart, that networking can become a pivotal sales and marketing tool for all of you ambitious business owners out there listening to this podcast episode. But before we dive into this, let me remind you folks that if you find value in our episodes in the Master Your Business show, which I really hope that you do, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And hey, if you're feeling extra generous, why not leave us a rating and a review? It truly goes a long way in helping us to spread the word about the Master Your Business podcast. So without further ado... Jean, welcome to the Master Your Business podcast. Let's unlock the power of networking together. The amazing Jean Evans is here with me and I couldn't but not come back from my holidays to do this incredible interview because I know how amazing Jean is and what value you're going to get from this episode. So Jean, can you please introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you and folks, please be posting your questions in the chat as we're talking today. Fantastic. Deirdre, thank you so much for inviting me on to the Master Your Business podcast. I'm a big fan. I actually did a little blog recently and podcasts I listened to, so you were in my list. So my name is Jean Evans and I have a business called Network Me. Um, I specialize in all areas of networking. So I speak, I train, I do workshops, lunch and learns, I facilitate uh, networking events. 
Um, I'm passionate about it because it's something that I realized that we're, we, we all really need, I'm passionate because we all really need to learn and know how to network. It's like the foundation of any business or career. And yet it's not something that we're taught. And a lot of people think that they're already supposed to know how to network. And that is just not the case. So what I've learned is as somebody who's naturally shy, but also an introvert, is that it's a skill that you can learn. And it's something that you have to practice in order to get better. But I am all about giving practical and honest advice and support and mentoring to people who want to learn how to network. And I'm also setting up my own network. So it's a business to business network, um, Ignite Business Network. Uh, dot ie is where you can find more details and that is starting in September amazing okay so there's so much already value in everything you've said there but the one thing that really jumps out to me Jean and this is part of the reason why I brought you on is that networking is a skill that you can learn and this I've posted about this a couple of times this past year because I used to think I was an introvert I used to network very often but more recently, I'm realizing I'm probably a bit more introverted than ever I knew. And maybe COVID has helped me realize that and that I like being at home and being quiet and doing things in my head. So I find now that when I go to networking events, it takes me a lot to make myself go. And so for somebody who's a bit like me, who's a little bit reluctant maybe to go to networking events, what advice or tips would you give for that? Okay, so there, there's a lot in that. So the first thing I'd say is I only actually discovered that I'm an introvert about two or three years ago, and it was a massive aha moment. And one of the things that I then incorporated from that when I'm speaking is I mentioned about understanding whether you're an introvert or an extrovert in all of my training because it's so massively important. Extroverts and introverts, we do and manage networking differently. And it's not that one is right or wrong. It's just different. And unless you understand how your energy flows and what your triggers are, you can't manage yourself to, to best effect. So for me, when I'm talking in, in, uh, about networking, I always advise people to go and look at the it's in three buckets so you've got your pre which is the planning you've got your the perform you know the execution what you're going to do when you're showing up and then the post event what are you going to do in terms of follow-up what I see time and time again is people put an event in their diary they rock up and they have literally in their head ticked a box I've done a networking event there's no thought put into it there's no understanding what success will look like in terms of KPIs and metrics. There's no goals. It's not leveraged. And there's no time set aside in terms of follow-up. So the first thing I will say to people is, one, plan your networking events and the network of meetings you're going to go to in terms of structure. Have them done at the start of the month so they're in your diary and they become sacrosanct. Map time for you to plan what you're going to say how you're going to show up and particularly when you find it difficult visualizing what you're going to do and the decisions and how you're going to show up everything from how you're going to address what you're going to say your elevator pitch how you're going to greet people what time you're going to show up having all of those thoughts and decisions made in advance reduces sort of decision fatigue and it reduces the amount of things you have to think about when you're on site and you can actually focus on connecting with people and if, if people are new to networking it's a really good idea to get in contact with the host or whoever is managing the meeting and it might be that you know that you want to meet a couple of people or the type of people you want to get connected with and you can ask the host to broker that introduction for you so it start you know the ice is broken and then you can start those conversations but I think a huge misnomer for a lot of people is that you have to be a social butterfly. Now, as an introvert, I can tell you, I am not a social butterfly. I can be, I'm what you would call, I can be situationally in context, look like an extrovert. People sort of say, oh, but you can talk to loads of people. It's called like, it's situational. Mm -hmm. I'm, that's not my natural default. But for me being an introvert is that I have to 
manage my energy. So if I know I'm going to go to an event and I'm going to expend a lot of energy there, I have to conserve the energy beforehand for the event. And I love talking to people and I love finding about their business and what I can do to help and maybe how I can be a part of their success or connect them to the people that might help them on their journey. But I love that. Afterwards, then I have it scheduled in my diary that I'm not talking to anybody because I need to then recharge. And as an introvert, I recharge my batteries by talking to nobody. So that's, you know, and that was a really, really massive aha moment, whereas the extrovert gets their energy from talking to two people. So it's a very, very, very different source. And as I said, there isn't one that's right or wrong. It's about learning what is right for you. And I think within networking as well another point that I certainly realized over the years because I worked in corporate nobody taught me how to network I got made redundant had to go out into the business world and it was all of these learnings and what I was learning about myself and the one thing I would say is that networking you know I said at the start that it's a skill networking is intensely intensely nuanced and in my previous life, I did an awful lot of presenting and I would get up in the auditorium and present things. You see, you must be very confident. And I say, yes, but it's not about me. It's about the content, a delivery, a project. I was bidding for conferences. It's not about me. It's about content and my ability to convey and deliver a message. But when you're at networking, this is the difference. It's all about you. And who are you? What do you stand for? Knowing and doing the work on what are your missions? What are your values? What are your priorities, roles? What are your goals? This is part of the planning part um, for me. It's not that you're going to plan all of that each time you go to a meeting. But if you're going to go on a networking journey, you need to have thought of this sort of stuff. You need to know who your ideal client is. You know, when you've talked about your BNC, you need to do that brand work to know who your ideal customer is, to know how you're going to connect with them, because that's the information you're going to use to teach people. And this is another thing. Networking is about selling, but it is about teaching people about who you are, what you're about, what you're ideal customer looks like and you're in the business of teaching people and educating people about the value you bring to your clients and that's really really important if you can't convey that and you can't get that across you can't then get the referrals into your business or for your career so you know it's looking at that what do you want to get out of it what does I think there's an awful lot of networks as well that a lot of people going into networking they haven't thought about what success is going to look like as a result of being in the network. And you need to think about that in advance because if you haven't set goals and metrics, how do you measure whether it's successful? And paying the money, is that's the easy part. You know, I was doing a call with somebody earlier. So that, that's a bank transfer. That's easy. Then the work starts. What are you going to say? What do you need people to know about you? How are you going to show up? What's your ideal client look like? How do you nurture those relationships? And after your networking meeting, how are you going to do your follow-up? So back to the social butterfly thing, it's better as an introvert to focus on meeting if you're starting two or three people or maybe up to four people, but you're not trying to look at meeting more people than that. You're trying to have deep and meaningful conversations. And if an extrovert, what I'd say is you might want to meet three, four, five, six, because you can handle meeting more people, but you need to correlate the amount of meetings you're having, the amount of conversations you're having with the follow-up you need to do, there is absolutely no point in coming out of a meeting or an event with 10 or 20 or 40 business cards because you simply will not do the follow-up because it will become overwhelming and then nothing happens. And the value is in the follow-up and how do you then extend and amplify the relationships? If you've met somebody and you want to continue the conversation you're linking in with them on email, on LinkedIn, on social media. You're organizing to meet them for lunch or coffee to continue the conversation because you're building up the relationship. But that all takes time and planning and it takes strategy. And that's what I find a lot of people, they sort of, I'm going to an event, I've ticked box and I'm going, that's not going to pay the dividend that business owners want. Amazing. Oh my gosh, Jean, I have literally got a full A4 page of notes based on everything you've just said there. Okay, there's loads to do pre, during and post and you need to know what you're going to say and all of that. But let's take it back a step, right? 
ignite that's your network Hmm. let's imagine that networking is new to me or I'm on the hunt for a network what is what do I need to look for very good question so what do you need to look for I suppose there's gosh there's so many different things so I'm going to break it down first are you in a b2c or b2b business because there are some networks that will work on both some will work on only b2b or only b2c so you need to obviously define where your business fits in 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 that sort of um, realm and um, geography is a huge thing uh, a lot of business owners you know you've got a lot of local business owners who serve a local jurisdiction and that's absolutely fine but there are a lot of business owners where they're e-commerce or online or the business can extend beyond borders whether it's counties within Ireland or within borders of ter- in terms of national you know nationality looking at geography And people tend to think, especially when they're starting, that I have to look at my local networks. You have to look at where your ideal client is. And this is where the brand work is. Who is my ideal client? Where do they hang out? Where can I find them? That's really, really key. Where do they work? And as as a baseline, what I will always say to people is you need to be part of at least two or three different networks. More if you can handle it, but at least two or three. And it might be that, particularly if you're in B2B, one that you're going to one every single week, uh, one that might be once a month or one that might be twice a month. And that's what I would start off with because you can get them into your routine. You can polish your elevator pitch. You can get used to communicating and getting into the flow of what it takes to do the follow up and attend the meeting. So it takes a little bit of time. So I would advise people to start slowly and build it up so that they're building that sort of muscle, that networking muscle up. And then they can take on more. But there's always different network. Time is a huge thing that people will will come back and say to me, oh, I don't have time. And I I absolutely will dismiss that every single day of the week because it's about the priority and where we choose to spend our time. But there's always network. So the time of day, what suits you? And I think for women in business, that can be sometimes different to men in business, depending on the dynamics at home and kids and school drop-offs and stuff like that. And for everybody, there is a season in what is going to work. So again, there isn't a right or wrong answer. It's what works for you today. But you can find networks that are early morning or mid-morning or lunchtime or evening. You will find something to suit you. But also look at look at the skills and look at what you need out of the network. Because it's not, a lot of people, again, starting, they get, right, I've started a business And I want to find people who can give me business and to have that sort of mindset. And that's a take mindset. So what I would say, the first thing is go with a giving mindset. And what a giving mindset means is you're going in to learn about everybody else in your network. You are curious, you're finding out about them and you are learning about how you can help them. And the next thing people say to me is, well, I've only just started. I've nothing to give. Uh, To which my response would be, To know that you have nothing to give is to make a grand assumption that you know what they need. And unless you've had a conversation with somebody, you don't know what they need. So I I love that. that. Yeah. Be curious and be open because all of us have a history. All of us have chapters about what brought us to the point in life we are today. And all of our chapters are a chapter that open and close and open to the next one. So find out about that because we all have a little black book, whether we realize it or not. But it's how networking is predicated on a no like and trust factor. And I will always add in respect a no like trust and respect factor that you're building up those relationships with people. So it's geography. It's knowing what you need to get out of the network. And as I said, a lot of people will start with sales and sales. Yes, that's always going to be an end game. But it, if that is the only metric, most networks will fall short of, of that because it's about community. Where are you building up a community of people who will have your back, who will support you? Can you find referral partners, people who can be customer sources for you? Because this is a huge thing in terms of helping people. A lot of people will go out networking and think I'm going to try and find my end customer. And I'm going, you need to do an awful lot of networking to constantly find your end customer. But how about having your marketing, 
having very clear sort of social media website, all of that strategy, which is doing one part of the work for you. Networking for me is, is part of your sales and marketing. It is your sales and marketing strategy. It's amplified through your social media and your website and your copy and everything that you're doing on that side of things digitally. It's amplified by the meetings that you're having, the team that you're building. Um, and all of these things are, are, are very, very important to consider. So having the community then, you might find collaborative partners and collaboration might be that you enter into joint venture, a door is opened, a new introduction is made. So there's so many different things you get, but fundamentally, um, and this is not necessarily the answer that most people expect, but what I've learned is that networking and learning to network gives you confidence. It builds your self-awareness. And I don't know anybody who can succeed in business, in career, in life, unless they have become self-aware and learn how to build their confidence and learn about resilience. Because I was doing a, I was doing a, a lecture to a, a group of graduates last week and they're all young and they're very, very green or whatever. I said, here's the thing. And you mentioned my network, Ignite Business Network, which is starting in September. I launched that last year on a Thursday. I did a soft launch with a view of starting that in January. And I did it on a Thursday and I was diagnosed with cancer on the Monday. And that was a whole thing that shifted everything for me. Did not plan it, did not expect it, did not see it coming, but that was life happening. And so I'm nothing of that perseverance. I'm all I do is delay things for me. But the point is, you never know when life is going to come up and bite you in the butt. But if you're networked and you're connected and you're building those relationships, things will happen. You future-proof yourself. Networking outside of sales, your connections, your relationships, your friendships, it is going to be a sanity check for you. It is going to be, they're going to be the people who are your tribe, who have your back, who support you, who will challenge you. Not just telling you what you want to hear, challenge you and who will just be there for you. And that is unbelievably important. So out of the list of communications, collaborations, connection, it's confidence, but confident you can't do anything. You Nobody can unleash their potential until they understand how to become confident. And confidence, I was reading a book there, basically the gist of it is confidence is no longer the sideshow, it is the main game. And if you think about it from that perspective, what are you doing to grow your confidence? And for all of the people who say, oh, I can't network because I'm shy and because I'm an introvert, I'm going, yep, here's your sister used to be pathologically shy, absolute out and out introvert, but I love networking. I've learned how to make it work and manage it for me. And the win you get from networking, I love the tail is just going there. It's like this. Yeah, yeah dogs are here there. wagging their tails. They regularly feature on the Master Your Business podcast, Jean. And uh, yeah. they're very welcome. Um, they're very but, welcome. Oh my gosh, what a story, folks. And um, I think, Jean, all of the things that you've talked about there in terms of confidence, self awareness, resilience, communication, collaboration, competence. You are walking the walk. You're ta- you've are you been talking the talk, but you've literally walked the walk. Mm. And that's so clear. You're here today. You still have a successful business despite being out because of a health issue that cropped up. And you look amazing. You're doing great. So continued success in that front. Thank you. So loads of things. Oh, they're making all sorts of noises here behind me now. I think they're agreeing <laughs> with all of those things I've just said. <laughs> But so a few of those things that that have cropped up based on what you've said, and I loved all those tips you gave in relation to, so what to look for when you're going to a network. But I know when I posted before, something a client actually commented that really resonated with me that they do is that before they go to attend an event, part of the planning process that they have is to try to see who else is going to be attending that networking event. And what they consciously do is they try to set up meetings before the networking event or immediately afterwards to get even more from attending the networking event. And I thought, oh, my God, that sounds like a great idea, but incredibly intimidating. (laughs) 
but I love the idea. And so what sort of advice would you offer if somebody else likes that idea as well? I think it's, a, it's absolutely a great idea. I think there's very, in, in the old days, pre-COVID and pre-GDPR, it was easier to get access to who was attending events and easier than, than it is now. But this is where connecting in with the host and maybe saying, who would you like to meet? Or even if you do, you know, sometimes they might give you the list of the name and the company, but they won't give you any contact details. So maybe you can link in on LinkedIn with them, say, hey, I believe you're going to be going to this event. Would you be interested in meeting up for a coffee? And it's a great way of building relationships with people. And likewise, I've done this a plenty of time, chamber events, where either I have organized a one-to-one -one before or straight after, or if there's somebody new I've met, say, hey, have you got time for a coffee? I'd love to have a coffee with you or organize it so that there's very much a, you're in process, if you like, in terms of, of the networking. I think for me, networking events versus networking meetings, and I make a distinction between these. So a networking meeting is where you're going to a facilitation structured event that is every week. So usually the typical are about an hour and a half where you're doing 60 seconds on your business, you're learning about another person's business and you're connecting and you're working out how you can help each other. And that's very much facilitated and structured um, as opposed to an event where, you know, there's coffee and there's entertainment and there might be a speaker. So there's a difference between how you would approach both, if you like. But certainly if you're going to an event, there's a couple of things with that. If you can organize to have meetings pre and post, then you have a person to walk into the room, you know, certainly if it's pre or bring a wing person. What I would say with the wing person is it's great to go with somebody, but don't rely on them because don't forget you're there to network. Um, so that's one part of it. I would also say is arrive early and act like a host. Uh, what I mean by act like a host is you go in and if you're there early and you've set yourself up and you've had your cup of tea and you're facing the door and you've got a smile on your face, you then can welcome people coming into the room who are likely to be as nervous as you, maybe more. But if you can broker and just say, hey, it's lovely to see you. I just arrived early, wants to make sure I got parking, whatever, and just start the chit chat and you welcome them, you're there going to be, oh my God, thank God somebody was there and smiled and now I've got somebody to talk to. So the, the relief becomes contagious then you know so you can do things like that but a lot of a lot of people will look at networking events going if it starts at seven o'clock you're going to see me rocking in the door at seven or one minute past seven because then I won't have to talk to somebody and nobody will see me coming in and what I say is nope that's a recipe for disaster because either it'll be it's a seated event you didn't know what the format was. All the seats at the back are taken and somebody at the start of the top of the room goes, oh, there's a seat here at the front. And you're going, oh my God, mortification. Now I have to walk through the room because I didn't get here early. So my trick is one, get there early if you can, because it allows you to situate, find where the bathrooms are, go get stuff with a drink or whatever, just to be, you know, to ingest the surroundings of the event, but acting like a host and smiling. And this, mm -hmm. what I was saying earlier about the planning part of it, if you can plan to remember, my, it sounds silly, but if you plan going, what am I going to look like when I go in? Well, my shoulders going to be down. I'm going to be smiling and I'm going to smile when I go the past the threshold. If you've actually thought about this and you can envision it, it's easier for it to happen because you've already, our, our, our minds work in pictures. So it's already, if you can already see, this is what your mind thinks you're already supposed to do. You've taken the thought process out of it. It's not a decision you need to make. So your body language and your demeanor changes and you relax because you're not working on cortisol and the sort of fight or flight notion. You're just relaxed. If you can go with a mindset of, curiosity and what I was saying is I'm going to meet three or four people whatever that looks like I'm going to have really good conversations I know what I need people to know about my business and what I'm going to say because I've thought about that I'm smiling I'm relaxed and I'm going to go with my curious hat on and for the introverts go back to that one being an introvert when it comes to networking is the superpower so that's something that I could spend another episode on but Networking as an introvert is a superpower. So own it, enjoy it. And you, when you start switching it and going, actually, I'm going to go and discover about people rather than being all in my own head. If I'm all in my own head, I'm not thinking about anybody else other than myself. But if you act like a host and you come out and go, I'd love to find out more about the people who are there, 
you don't have time to think about yourself because you're putting that. other people at ease. And that is sort of a, a skill of networking where you're c- connecting. Another point, and particular, particularly for women, that I would say this one is learning to shake hands is really important. Yes. And women tend to, I did a whole blog on this. So networkinggene.ie, I have a blog and I blog on all of these things. And as I come across notions and ideas and comments and stuff like that, but this was one where I, I shake hands with my kids. They don't even realize what I'm doing, but I'm showing them how to shake hands properly. But women in particular tend to rock up to a group and then they'll wave. And I'm going, stop waving. Please stop waving. A good handshake, straight up, thumb up, facing the sky, pinky facing the floor, and straight in, equal, and a good on of your hand and a nice firm handshake. Not bone crushing but just firm handshake and it says so much about you but if you don't do it the the impact of it as well I think this is very not a very well known fact but we release a connection hormone called oxytocin when we shake hands and it would take you about three hours of conversation with somebody to build up the same rapport as the time it takes you to shake hands with somebody wow that's so interesting mega interesting the power of it is really important in how we start building up that trust so why would you not learn but the other side of it is if you don't have a good handshake and you're not sure in business what your handshake feels like or what is conveying go to a trusted advisor or a friend or something like that and test it and say right what's that feel like because if your handshake is weak or bad people won't do business with you that makes total I'll sense. Tell you. Yeah, they're it's like like ever. going for your interview for a job as well, isn't it? But those sweaty palms and all of those things, that's the advantage then of arriving early. You can go into the bathroom and wash your hands and get rid of that sweaty feeling and then exactly. to go in and do a nice handshake. Yeah. I love that idea. And Jean, some of the things you've said there is like you go with a mindset of curiosity where you know what you're going to say about your business or your brand and you know but you're there really to discover about other people there's a fine line isn't there between being nosy and being curious so what types of questions should people ask and I know this is very nuanced as you said before but what types of questions should people ask I think there's the questions really depend on the context and again this if it was a meeting versus an event I would probably have a slightly nuanced approach in between both of them if it's at an event I would be just very simply tell me about your business and depending what that is oh how did you get into that is that something you've always done what are the trends what are you seeing what does the future hold so you just you're just exploring and you're sort of what I'm doing in my head is I'm what I'm doing is creating a digital Rolodex of people businesses because what I want to know is right if I don't know how to help you today I'm never going to be able to learn how to help you tomorrow unless I catalog a certain amount of information. And Um, should you dive into that though, Jean, or should you ask questions first to build rapport? How should it start? Because it's a bit like, I suppose, when you're a kid in the playground and you walk up to somebody, you're like, you just start playing together and then you have a conversation. But as adults, it's just so much harder. It's all of those probably things that we say in our heads to ourselves, but yeah. Like, how do you make that first approach and start the conversation without diving instantly in to tell me about your business? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I probably go straight forward because I'm used to do <laughs> Um, I'm laughing. I know what you're talking about in terms of chit chat, but chit chat, a lot of people will go as well in terms of netting going, I hate the small talk and the chit chat, but yet everybody does it. So the husband or wife or partner comes in for how was your day? What did you get up to? That's all chit chat. We do chit chat all of the time, but we don't really class it as chit chat if we're just doing it. But if somebody comes to an event, where did you come from? Or it might be the end of the summer. Did you get away for the summer? Did you go anywhere nice? Tell me a little bit about that. So for me, I'm actually working on a blog at the moment in terms of conversation points. But I think you can conversation points can be seasonal. For the moment, kids are back to school next week. You're looking forward to that. Are you all set? So there's all this sort of seasonal stuff that you can um, go on to or holidays or Christmas or occasions and things like that. Um, if it's about the event, uh, it might be 
had they come to that event before? Did they come just for the speaker? Are they part, if it's part of an association, are they a, a member a long time? And then that sort of, then that, there's a natural gravitation and going, and so what do you do yourself? What, tell me a little bit about your business. So it's not about it here as me asking 20 questions, but it's done in a fashion where it's curious and one question begets the next question. So that's sort of the way I would frame that. Um, but I would also say, listen, I love finding out, I'd be very honest with people saying, I love finding out about businesses because if I don't know about them, I can't help them. So I, I literally go, listen, I, I'm going to ask a few questions here, but I'd be very open in in, in that side of, of things as well. But again, if you got what I would, a lot of people aren't building or bringing business cards. Um, another blog I started actually must finish is the um, digital or printed business cards. Oh yeah. What do you recommend? Personally, I all about printed business cards. And I'll tell you why. As you, now I do have both. I will put my hand up and say I do have both. But if you've got the business card and you've had a conversation, you can write, met this person, this is the conversation points, here's a follow-up piece on it and stick it into your wallet and you have that as an action piece for the next day or when you get back to the office, whatever, of the follow-up points. If you've got a digital business card, you're not doing that. You've no, you've no recollection other than you've made the connection. And there, used, there was a bit of a phase there a while ago where people would go to events and they would click on the LinkedIn thing and they would have a LinkedIn profile. Here's everybody that's in the room. Yeah. And I thought, that is a terrible idea. Really? And here's, oh, gosh. Here's where, why I believe it's a terrible idea is because how you're not one you're not meeting all of those people you're never going to know that they were at that event with you and the value in meeting people and connecting with people is that you've actually had a conversation and then when you do follow up on LinkedIn hi dear it was lovely to meet you at xyz event last night really enjoyed the conversation here's a copy of the article I was talking about and I'd love to continue the conversation would you be free for a coffee next Wednesday Okay, so I kind of do part of that, Jean. This is what I've been doing up, up until now, is that I've been going to the event, connecting with people on LinkedIn. I send them a message the next day. And this is more so for me to say, hey, Jean, great to connect with you at the Ignite event last night. Because then when I look back on the chat on LinkedIn later, I remember how I met them exactly. in the first place. So all my exactly. secrets are coming out now, folks. Um, but yeah. that is literally what I do. And it's so that I can remember where I met them and then I will like it depending on how the conversation went or what what I could offer or help or if there was somebody that I connect them with I'll try and do that but I haven't been very good at always continuing the conversation with them so do you suggest that we do that when we're having that conversation initially or later on if we connected with them on LinkedIn or wherever I think honestly it, it really depends and so I think, yes, per, that's a huge thing. So personalizing the LinkedIn message is massively important. Pressing connect without telling the person why you're connecting. A lot of people won't answer that connection because they're going, I don't know why you're connecting with me. And I think before we were more sophisticated and how, and I know for myself in the past, I would just go and connect, connect, connect before I started understanding how it all works. But, but now what I advise is only connect when you know why you're connecting with somebody. You don't have to know them, but you have to tell them why you are connecting. Because as you said, that goes into the aid memoir. So whether it's three months or six months or a year in between conversations or whatever, you need to be able to draw back on, oh yeah, I remember meeting that person at that event. But if you have no message in there, you're never going to remember. You simply won't. We're just not able to remember that much information. So you need to help yourself to be better. And in terms of the follow-up then, I suppose in any types of business, like I was reading uh, something the other day, all businesses have what is like the bread and butter business, which is the stuff that the easy business, then there's what's called the steak and chip business, which is higher margin, better value, but there's less of it. So it's sort of going in a triangle. And then let's say, let's call it the caviar business, which is the creme de la creme of what you would like to get. And there's less customers there, but they're the most profitable businesses. Depending on where and who you're meeting and the paradigm, the type of person that you're meeting will also dictate how much follow up or what or when you're going to follow up with that person. Do they fit into one of those customer bases or are they a good referral partner that you could build relationship with? 
or are they somebody who's on the periphery? So it's not to say that you wouldn't have a follow-up strategy, but you need to know where they fit in on the paradigm of helping you move along your business strategy. If somebody is on the periphery and not urgent that you meet them, but you think that they have, you know, they have good contacts, they would be a good person to meet or have continue a conversation, build a relationship, you might say, can we organize a meeting for three or four weeks time? But if you met somebody who is a potential referral partner, you say, actually, do you know what? That's more urgent. I'm going to prioritize that as a one-to-one to to happen next week or see, can I I make that happen next week? And I think it's looking at, we all are limited with time, but it's, you want to be doing your one-to-one, but here's the thing that people do. They will look at networks and say, nobody in that network can give me business. But that mentality and mindset is I'm on the take. I'm on the hunt. I only want to talk to people who can help me, not the way networking works. So if you're going out like that, that's a sales. You're looking for a transaction and you're looking for sales and networking will not work. Networking is about investing in other people first, building those relationships, getting to know them, letting them get to know you. So you've built up the know, like, and trust. You've got to be able to do that and invest that time and understand that networking is a marathon, not a sprint. And when you have done that, then you have, then you can start saying, hey, I'm looking to connect with this person or this is the my ideal customer. You're looking to create those advocates in business. But when I when I worked with my my partner has a business in managed print, and um, I'll do a little shout out because yeah, it'd be sorted if I didn't do that. Highline Office Technology. So he has a business in managed print. And one of the things that I used to do as an example uh, was I used to build relationships with IT companies because IT companies were natural referral partners for managed print. So it's easier to manage a smaller number of relationships with IT companies than it is to find lots of end customers. But the end customer side comes from your website, your social media, your copy, relationships that you're building. But referral partners is another segment of relationship that you're building. And that's, I think that's a really important um, part of the networking mix in terms of how it's done better and leveraged and, and is more strategic. Love that. And oh my gosh, there's so much in there again, Jean. You're such a powerhouse when it comes to this topic. And one of the things that, that jumps out for me there is that networking is about in, investing in other people first. I love that. And I think with social media and because of the pandemic, correct me if I'm wrong, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this, but because of the pandemic and with social media that people are now more open to networking online. So for me, I do a ton of networking on LinkedIn. Like I talk to people in the messages very regularly on on LinkedIn. And then if I think that I can help this person or I might know somebody that I can connect them with, I'll, I'll definitely do that and maybe try and hop on, hop and have a coffee and chat with them. But if we were to take it, let's say from a networking event to networking meetings, how can people leverage social media to help with their networking? What other tips do you have on that? Okay, so I think a, l- a lot of people, particularly when they're starting out, and not even when they're starting out, a lot of people think that being on social media is the networking. And I'm going, nope, 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 nope. Not in my opinion. I think it is a way of, for me, the way I, I visualize it is the way of amplifying and expanding the networking that you're doing. So if I'm sort of, uh, if I'm meeting people and I'm connecting with them, then I am going to connect with them on LinkedIn. I'm going to email them. I'm going to follow their socials. I'm going to support by commenting um, on their posts. Or when I come across them, I will try and comment and support and what have you. Um, And that is part of amplifying it. I think networking online, as you alluded to in terms of COVID, COVID was made networking online a necessity. And a lot of people started online and that's the only networking they have known because they might have got made redundant or let go or what have you. And they started businesses or started something else during COVID and they've never known the face-to-face networking. So now they're very comfortable online, but now this ability to come out from out from behind the screen and go into a room with real people where you can go, boop, you're a real person, is like, whoa, fills them with dread. What I would love to say to people is please get outside your comfort zone. And yeah, well, you know, it's get outside the comfort zone. And it's and people will say, but it's really efficient. And I'm going, yes. But do you want your networking to be efficient or do you want it to be effective? Yeah. 
I agree is- completely. And that makes total sense. Part One of my um, resolutions, if you like, that I made to myself this year is for quarter one and two, I was just so busy with work that I was behind the desk all of the time and all of my networking was online. So mm-hmm. I resolutely said that quarters three and quarters four 2023 I'm going to be out and about so much more and it's interesting since I even said that to myself in terms of my mindset I've had five people reach out to me and ask me to do keynote speaking engagements and I'm like that's just crazy I've said I'm going to put I've said to myself I'm going to put myself out there I'm going to go to these events and then all of a sudden these invitations come in now I've been doing those before but how it happened in that way I just thought that was interesting that and that's a really interesting point as well because I think a lot of people will go into networking think I'm only going in for this not realizing that it can generate that and case in point when I started my business I wanted to teach people how to network and then somebody asked me to speak and I was like oh oh I didn't think of speaking as an avenue of business and now it's absolute stream of business for me that I hadn't thought of so other people will think about you and your content in different ways that you don't think about and that is also a value of your network and people the questions and this is what I think is fascinating and why the time thing is from big say, oh, I don't have time going you don't have time if you want a successful business mindset is everything and growing your mindset is everything and you cannot do that sitting behind a computer screen you cannot it is simply impossible so how ambitious are you for your career or your business how ambitious because if you are you need to get out and talk to people because it's the questions they ask and You can use all of this. I did a blog on ways that networking can help your marketing. Every single question that somebody asks you in a networking meeting, you should be jotting it down. Have an A6 notebook in your your pocket, breast pocket or in your bag or whatever. Write down every single question because that is a blog or a social post. So you use all of this content and repurpose it. And what's even better with that, Jean, and I love that. Oh my gosh, yeah, I absolutely love that. But what's even better then is that people will paraphrase back to you what you do in their words and in their language to make sure they've understood it. Yes. And if you can remember what they said verbatim and use that in your marketing, that's even more powerful because you're taking the 100%. language that clients use and yeah. in your marketing. That's incredibly you your marketing And your LinkedIn yes. and your website and your social posts. Oh my Lord, your SEO then goes through the roof in terms of your blog posts and how you're peppering all of these words in through your marketing. But people, I what, one of the slides when I'm presenting is a glass full and the the glass full literally full of water that represents most business owners and yet they want innovation they want space they want more and I'm going how can you have more when you're telling me your glass is full your glass you have to empty some of it out and emptying some of it out might be I, I talk about a candle so the wax and flame work out and a bit like the work that you would do in terms of what with your clients and customer journey and where people are at the values mission mission purpose all of that sort of stuff you work out with business owners what their passion is what they're good at what they want to be doing and work out all the stuff they don't want to be doing who else could do that because somebody else can do it quicker better faster and the wax which is the stuff you don't want to do is somebody else's flame there is somebody else who wants that because that's what floats their boat yeah. It's looking at things, empty a bit of tip a bit of that water out, hire a virtual assistant, delegate, hire somebody in, whatever that looks like, outsource it, insource it, hire some, whatever that looks like. Start with a virtual assistant where you're just doing a contracted hours to get somebody else to do the social posts or the copywriting, stuff you're just not good or comfortable at to allow you to focus on your passion. And that allows you the time then to go out networking. And what networking will do is open your mind. And it opens your minds because people see your business differently. The conversations they're having will spark ideas. It'll open doors. And serendipity and synchronicity play a huge part of why and how networking works. But serendipity and synchronicity don't work if you're sitting behind a computer screen not showing up. 
Agreed. So again, oh my gosh. Yeah. You talked about books. I'm reading one right now. And that's exactly what it's saying. You have to get out there. And those conversations can lead to incredible collaborations, all of the things you mentioned earlier on. And yeah, you have to get out there. Question, Jane, for you, just as we're wrapping it up. Final takeaways that you have for anybody who's watching or listening to this. What, what are the top three tips that you give somebody as it relates to networking in any format? If you haven't started, start because networking is about. So if it's for your career, for your business, start networking today and future proof yourself. As I said, you don't know when life is going to happen, but you cannot drink from a well when you have not dug the well. And it's the same thing with networking. You cannot ask for help from your network if you have not built up those relationships and you never know when you're going to need them. For me, had my health issues happened five years ago, I would have had a very, very different experience to the experience I had this year. And my network in weird and wonderful ways came out to support me when I needed it. And because I had learned how to let myself out. And I, I did a podcast myself on, on my own podcast um, two or three weeks ago, I think it was. And I just said from Ice Maiden to Networking Queen, because in my corporate role, I was known as the Ice Maiden because oh. I did not let people in. And I know, and you know, people say, oh, I know. And but what was happening behind it was this massive imposter syndrome and lack of confidence. People said, well, you look very confident, but my confidence came across as austere and cold. And I was called the ice maiden. And but what I've learned through networking is how to connect with people and how to build relationships and let people in and going, that's OK. And also be OK in my own skin. With going, this is who I am. If you want to come into my world and you're a nice person, come on in. If you're not and you don't like me, keep on jogging. That's okay. So that's start before you need it because you never know when you're going to need it. And need is not just about the sale because life will happen when you least expect it. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is if you're in a B2B business, spend time planning. And I don't mean just putting the date of the diary and the time in the diary. Plan, 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 because you cannot perform when you go if you have not planned. And it will take all of the angst and the anxiety out of it. And what I would say as well is be compassionate with yourself and kind because it is a skill. I said that at the start. Networking is a skill. Be compassionate with yourself as you were learning because you didn't jump out of your mother's womb, knowing how to drive a car or how to uh, work a budget on Excel or how to ride the bike or how to walk the dog or how to raise kids. You didn't, you learned. And networking is a skill. And there's days where you're going to get it. And there's days where it's just going to go that well. Because I was like, oh, yeah, boom. that's okay. It's like going, well, okay, what can I learn from that? Okay, I didn't sleep very well. The kids kept me up, um, had a fight with the other half. Whatever it is, life happening. What were the triggers? What happened? What can I do differently? Learn and do better the next time. But be compassionate. Realize that it's a, a forever event. Networking is a forever moment. But I, I was doing a call with somebody earlier and I said, you know what? If you are going to be in business for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, then you need to be thinking about networking for 10, 20, 30 years because networking is it's like compound interest on your pension. And I say that in all my presentations to drum this point home, it only works with time, but you've got to make that investment because you never know when it's going to repay and uh, give those dividends. So I could literally, Deirdre, I could sit here all day and give you tips, but uh, hopefully there's a few things in there that will resonate and help. As I said, I have my blog, which is just a free resource, networkinggene.ie, which I just have loads of blogs and things, my musings and thoughts and ideas and where you can network. I do network profiles and stuff like that, where you can network. Yeah, hopefully that's of help. Fantastic. And so it's likely that this episode, Jean, is not going to air until maybe even uh, January or February of 2024. And so the people who are watching today are getting a sneak preview of what's going to come. And that means that they're going to be aware of the launch of your network, Ignite, in September. But what else is coming up for you for 2023, 2024? So the idea, so the networking, so Ignite Business Network is starting on 7th and 8th of September. So South Dublin for the 7th of September and then Wicklow for the 8th of September. 
Um, so they're the first two groups. And I said, that's a business to business referral network. And then I am also doing a retreat at the end of September called Ignite Your Life. And people sort of going, well, how does that fit in with the networking? And I said, what I learned, I, 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 what I learned through becoming a coach, I qualified as a life business and executive coach. And what I learned through that and through my own experience and my health challenges this year is that we're not taught how to set goals. And people say, you should set a goal. I'm going, but people don't realize how to set a goal. Or people do vision boarding going, but how can you vision board unless you know your goals? And then it was, how do you know your goals unless you know what your values are? So what I wanted to do with my retreat, which is in Wicklow, Tinnakilly House on the 24th of September, is to do a day where I am start with yoga and meditation to get people to get into the right headspace, I'm going to do a goal setting workshop, then we're going to do fire walking. And the idea around the fire walking is to, if you can fire walk, you can manage your mind, you can accomplish anything, and then to take all of that positive energy and also the opportunity to burn limiting beliefs. So what are the things that are holding you back? The stuff that other people's voices in your head, I can't do this, I can't do that. No, write it all down, burn it. And that symbolism of saying, letting it go and then developing this vision board, say, what would I like my future? If I'm driving my own car and setting my future, how am I going to ignite my life? And that is very goal orientated. And why that links into the networking, networking is all about goals, whether it's career or business, it's all about the goals you want to achieve. So for me, well, I don't see how this is linked. For me, it's all about goals, networking for business, doing the retreat. It's how do you propel yourself forward? So that's what I'm doing. And then I am doing a I'm going to do a boot camp in October, which I haven't launched yet. So this is a sort of a pre, a sort of a ramp up a notification. I'm going to do a four week boot camp in October for networking and referral. So absolutely named and originally named the networking and referral boot camp. So it will do what it says on the can. But the idea is to take people through two hours once a week for the four weeks in October to work through some of the process. Where do I network? What am I saying? Who do I need to connect to? Who are my referral partners? And literally work on that planning phase. So when they go out, if they're if they're going from corporate into starting up a business or they're starting and they want to scale and now they're starting to network, but they want to propel themselves, this will be an accelerator for them because otherwise it can take a while. So I want to help facilitate the conversation around how to do it quicker, better, faster. Amazing. Loads going okay. on. And uh, on the podcast, I'm going to share all of Jean's blog information, her website and where you can follow her. And trust me, I am on her subscribers e list. I get her emails about her blog and all of the things and they are definitely worth the read. So be sure to follow Jean. I know, Jean, you're on LinkedIn for sure. And I, I, I'm sure I see you on Instagram as well. Am I right? I'm on, yeah, I'm on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. I have, the podcast is Network Me. So that's for people who want to listen to the content as opposed to reading it, but there's the blogs as well. So I do my video tips. So there's lots of different ways and look to develop that more in 2024 and to amplify that, that, that content. Jean oh my gosh it's been an absolute pleasure I could ask you so much more but I have two A4 pages <laughs> uh, already with notes and tips so thank you so so much for being on the Master Your Business podcast for joining me on this impromptu live stream that we've just decided to do before we started recording today uh, it's been wonderful having you wonderful chatting to you and I hope to see you out networking soon oh you will indeed I look forward to it thank you so much Deirdre thank you Jean bye bye Bye. What an enlightening episode that was. I told you Jean was the networking architect and clearly we can see there is a reason for that. She has undoubtedly showcased why. Her insights, stories and practical tips truly shined a light on the transformative power of networking for every ambitious business owner. Jean, we are incredibly grateful for you sharing not just your expertise, but also your personal journey. It's a testament to how the struggles and successes of networking can really reshape our professional landscape. It's also, I think, really heartening to see that genuine connections, strategic relationships, and having the mindset where you're showing up to give before receiving can make all of the difference 
even in the business world, right? It's not all dog eat dog, folks. So for all our listeners, I hope you've jotted down loads of Jean's gems. I have two A4 pages and like me that you are raring to go and implement them. So yeah, networking, it's not just about cards. It's not just about business cards, both business, digital and physical are great. Or is it just about handshakes? But a good firm handshake is important. And yeah, wash your hands first, folks. <laughs> it helps eliminate those sweaty palms. Yeah, first impressions count. But more so, it's about authentic relationships. Authentic relationships that push both personal and professional boundaries. So folks, I'm Deirdre Martin and hosting the Master Your Business podcast is always a highlight of my week when I get to record these episodes and interview incredible guests. And so a massive shout out to Jean Evans for gracing us with her presence today and opening up a world of networking possibilities. And of course, a huge, huge thank you to you, our devoted listeners. You're the backbone of this podcast. Now remember the journey to mastering your business. It's continuous. It's not linear. It's up and down. It's not always easy. So don't forget to tune in next time for more invaluable insights and strategies for an all access experience with the podcast, why not consider joining our Master Your Business podcast community? You'll find the link in the show notes. And until our next episode, keep weaving those networking webs and keep mastering your business. Remember, it's all about creating genuine connections and it starts with one handshake at a time. 